All right, good morning, everyone. Um, we will call the uh, meeting of the Transportation Committee of February 7th to order. Uh, physical quorum of the members are physically present. Uh, I will entertain a motion this morning to permit Chair Ozag, who is not physically present due to personal illness, to participate so by video or teleconference. So I have a motion. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? And Chair Ozag, you are. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Uh, the meeting's been called to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Chaplin, here. Covert, here. Evans, Oza, here. Tornatore, here. And Zay, here. Okay, do we have any public comment today? We do not. No. All right. Uh, next, I'd like to move to approve the meeting, the minutes of the meeting of January 17th, 2023. Second. Any comments, questions, or changes? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Next, we have budget adjustments, which seems to be the order of the day today in all our committees. I'd like to move to combine items A, 6A through L. These are all budget transfers. Okay. Second. Have a second. Okay. All right. So the items are combined. Now I'd like to move to approve items A through L. Uh, okay. Item A, budget transfer, or uh, move. Can I have a second, please? Mary, we need to vote. Need to oh, we need to do a, a roll call. Okay. Uh, we're going to move to combine and we need a vote, uh, a roll call. Thank you. Kaplan? Aye. Over? Aye. Give a second. Give a second. Yeah. Evans? <laughs> Ozog? Yes. Tornatore? Aye. And Zay? Aye. Okay, I now move to approve items A through L. Item A, budget transfer, 30, $390 from contingencies to water and sewer. Uh, budget transfer, $773 from contingencies to wearing apparel. Uh, budget transfer, $7,300 from repair and maintenance of roads to operating supplies and materials. Item D, budget transfer of $7,500 from capital contingency to employer share IMRF. Item E, budget transfer $7,800 from repair and maintenance of roads to furniture, equipment, small value. Item F, budget transfer of $13,000 from auto machine equipment parts to repair and maintenance facilities. Item G, budget transfer of $25,200 from auto machine equipment parts to operating supplies and materials. Item H, budget transfer of 46,000 from repair and maintenance of roads to repair and maintenance of signals. Uh, item, sorry. Item I, uh, budget transfer of $61,635 from capital contingencies to employer share social security. Item J, budget transfer of $65,000 from capital contingency to repair and maintenance of auto equipment. Item K, budget transfer 95,400 from capital contingency to employer share IMRF. And item L, budget transfer of 259,000 from regular salaries, uh, 57,000 from regular salaries and 87,000 from capital contingency for a total of 403,000 to regular salaries. Can I have a second? Okay, any comments or questions about these? Okay, hearing none. Uh, do we need a roll call for this? No, we can just do voice vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And any opposed? Okay, the motion's passed. Thank you. Uh, next, some change orders. I move for approval of a change order Parsons Transportation Group decrease in close. Um, actually, I'm going to move to combine A, B, and C. Okay, um, okay thank you. Um, so I move to approve um, items A, B, and C. Okay. We are Voice vote on the combined. Combined. Okay, voice vote for the combined. I'm sorry. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I move to approve uh, items A, B, and C. Uh, Parsons Transportation Group decrease and close. Item B, Lo Logicalis decrease and close. And item C, Civil Tech Engineering, uh, no change in the contract amount. Second. Um, second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes, thank you. Okay, next we have amending resolutions. Uh, these are all 
uh, decreases in funding with mowing agreements with various municipalities. So I move to combine items A through I. Second. Okay, and can we have a voice vote to combine? Or I'm sorry, can we have a roll call to combine? Roll call, we can have a voice vote. A voice, voice vote is fine. A voice vote is, okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, uh, now I move to approve um, item A, change order amendment to resolution DTR 024219, an intergovernmental agreement between County of DuPage and City of Wheaton for mowing along county roads and rights of way, decreasing funding in the amount of $2,991.25, final county cost of $2,858.75, a decrease of 51.13%. Item B, amendment to resolution DTR 0921A18, intergovernmental agreement between County of DuPage and Village of Carroll Stream for mowing along county roads, decrease the funding in the amount of $6,060.10, final county cost of $6,959,090, a decrease of 8.19%. Change order C. Uh, amendment to resolution DTR 00419, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Addison Township for mowing along county roads and right of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $18,195, resulting in a final county cost of $54,585, a decrease of 25%. Item D, uh, DTR 0078A19, amendment to resolution DTR 007819. Intergovernmental agree agreement between the County of DuPage and the Village of Woodridge for mowing along county roads and rights of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $18,919.72, resulting in a final county cost of $69,010.28, a decrease of 21.51%. Uh, change order E, uh, DTR 0003A19. Amendment to resolution DTR 00319, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the Village of Willowbrook for mowing along county roads right of, and rights of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $23,260, resulting in a final county cost of $47,030, a decrease of 33.9%. Item F, change order DTR 0021A19, amendment to resolution DTR 002119, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Bloomingdale Township for mowing along county roads and right of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $27,898, resulting in a final county cost of $29,822, a decrease of 48.33%. Item G, change order DTR 0019B19. Amendment to resolution DTR 0019A19, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Winfield Township for mowing along county roads and rights of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $32,209, resulting in final county cost of $45,281, decrease of 41.57%. Change order H, uh, DT, I move, uh, DTR 0043A19, amendment to resolution DTR 004319, an intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the Village of Glendale Heights for mowing along county roads and right, rights of way to decrease the, decrease the funding in the amount of $43,080.70, resulting in a final county cost, cost of $25,739.30, a decrease of 62.59%. Uh, change order DTR 0954A18, amendment to resolution DTR 0954A18, an intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Naperville Township for mowing along county roads and rights of way to decrease the funding in the amount of $221,578, resulting in a final county cost of $169,442, a decrease of 56.66%. Um, and that is that for this group. So um, I have a second for approval. Any comments or discussion about these items? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, next I move to combine items J through M. These are all decreases. Um, can I have a second to uh, combine? Second. Okay. And do we need a roll call vote? I'm sorry, Barb. Do we need a roll call vote? Can you can you hear me? I'm sorry. 
And do we need a roll call vote to combine? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I move to approve items J through M. Um, uh, change order DTR 03381B15, um, amendment to resolution DTR 038IA15, local public agency amendment number one for federal participation between the County of DuPage and Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements along County Highway 33 55th Street from Adams to Plainfield Road, section 15. 0023307LT to decrease the funding in the amount of $6,497.37, resulting in an amended total amount of $247,136.63, a decrease of 2.56%. Uh, item K, change order DTR 0155B15, amendment to resolution DTR 015515, local public agency agreement between the County of DuPage and the Illinois Department of Transportation for traffic signal upgrades at various county state intersections, section 15001707TL, to decrease the funding in the amount of $7,020.68, resulting in an amended, amended total amount of $27,979.32, a, de a decrease of 22.06%. Item L, change order DTR 0156A15, Amendment to resolution DTR 015615, local public agency agreement for federal participation between the County of DuPage and the Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements related to the installation of the DuPage County Central Signal System uh, to decrease the funding in the amount of $10,878.97, resulting in an amended total amount of $271,604.05, a, de a decrease of 3.85%. Item N, M, change order uh, DTR 0543A15, amendment to resolution DTR 054315, local public agency agreement for federal participation between the County of DuPage and the Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements along County Highway 31, Plainfield Road from Lamont to Cass Avenue um, to decrease the funding in the amount of $356,554.81 resulting in an amended total amount of $1,157,686.19, a decrease of 23.54%. Item N, change order DTR 0281A21, amendment to resolution Mary, DTR Mary, 0, I'm sorry. We only uh, combined through M. Oh, I'm sorry, forgive me. Okay, all right. Uh, so that was motion to approve. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I was on a roll. Uh, <laughs> next, I move for item N, change to approve change order DTR 0281A21, amendment to resolution DTR 028121, issued to Schroeder Asphalt for the County Highway 4 Bloomingdale Road and County Highway 21 Geneva Road intersection improvements. Uh, to increase the funding in the amount of $20,444.91, resulting in an amended contract total amount of $705,598.19, an increase of 2.98%. Right. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, we move on to item nine, procurement requisition. I move for approval of uh, 20... 2313 recommendation for the approval of a contract to Peterbilt, Illinois, doing business as JX Truck Center Bolingbrook to furnish and deliver Cummins engine repair and replacement parts for the Division of Transportation for a contract total not to exceed $29,900 per low bid. First yeah. renewal. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next, DP, DTP, I move for approval of DTP 005023, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Walter Incorporated to furnish and deliver one Doosan forklift for the Division of Transportation for a contract total not to exceed $36,658.09 uh, per source well contract. Can I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thanks. Next, I move for approval of DTP 005123, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Roland Machinery Company to furnish and deliver one 
HD tandem roller for the Division of Transportation for a contract total not to exceed $56,017.05 per source well contract. Second. Second. Okay, and any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, then item D, I move for approval of DTP 005223, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Auto Tech Centers Incorporated to furnish and deliver Goodyear tires as needed for the Division of Transportation for the period February 15th, 2023 through March 31st, 2024 for a contract total not to exceed $150,000 contract pursuant to Intergovernmental Cooperation Act. Second, please. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next, we have item 10, intergovernmental agreements. I move for approval of DTR 005323, a resolution intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the Village of Lombard for central signal system expansion number four pertaining to installation and future maintenance responsibilities. Uh, Section 19D CCSS 014TL County to be in re reimbursed $486,000. Can I have a second? Second, second. Okay, any comments or questions about this item? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye, aye. Okay. Okay. Now, item uh, eleven. Uh, this is informational pursuant to DTR zero three zero six B twenty two vehicle replacement purchase order for the Division of Transportation for FY twenty twenty three FY twenty twenty four has been issued through Cotton Ford in fr and Friendly Ford in the amount of one hundred ninety three thousand six hundred thirty eight dollars and ninety six cents. Um, so, item A: vehicle purchases Joe Cotton Ford. Um, so, um, actually, do we need to, these are informational, so do we need to do any approval or second? I'm, I'm sorry, okay, so I'm moving to place these on file. Uh, vehicle purchases, Joe Cotton Ford, vehicle purchases, Friendly Ford. Um, also a, uh, item T TEP 005323, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to a seller. Uh, for managed application services for the building and zoning, transportation, stormwater, and public works departments to provide support with permitting software that will allow online submittals, electronic document reviews, permit tracking, and mobile inspections by applicants and or county staff. This contract covers the period February 21st, 2023 through February 20th, 2024 for a contract total not to exceed 195000 This is exempt from bidding, not suitable for competitive bids, source, sole source. Acela is the sole provider for this software application. Okay, uh, now we move on to old business. Okay. And, I get a vote. Okay, all in favor of accepting and placing this information. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we move on to old business and I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. We're going to have an update on the Canadian Pacific Kansas City Southern Railroad merger update. All right, thank you, uh, Chair Ozog. So briefly, um, some of you probably heard or read that the final environmental document was released by the Office of Environmental Assessment under the STB. So if you remember over a year ago, DuPage County joined the coalition um, opposed to the merger of the CP Railroad Kansas City Southern kind of across the northern tier of, the, of DuPage County. Uh, that proposal is to basically um, establish the one and only single freight line from Canada to Mexico. Um, the concern to the coalition communities in DuPage is that it would increase the number of freight uh, trains from three per day today to um, up to eight. Some would argue even more than that, uh, up to 14, not argue, but there's documentation that says up to 14. So um, as you, many of you know, we, we DuPage County, uh, join the coalition. We've been actively engaged in working with the coalition, participating in the public involvement, uh, going to the Surface Transportation Board and actually testifying um, on behalf of the coalition, um, concerned about the merger, particularly as it relates to emergency response, uh, traffic delays and safety. Obviously, the community impacts of noise, vibration um, were also raised. So the OEA um, admitted, uh, did take into account um, our comments. Uh, they traditionally went through each one of them and, and responded back to us. The conclusion in the final EIS is that um, in spite of the comment that they received, you know, for the entire um, study area, 
including the coalition communities, is that there nothing is going to change the recommendation and that this project will have a nominal or minimal impact uh, moving forward. And so um, the next step is now that it was officially released last Friday through the Code of Federal Regulations, the STB now has 30 days to uh, um, issue their final uh, findings. So they'll take the recommendations of the OEA, which is an environmental analysis. The STB, my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, um, but my understanding is they control kind of the commerce and competition among railroads. So they're going to look at it from that standpoint, um, whether this is good for business, good for, for competition in the country, um, taking into account uh, what the uh, OEA also recommends. So the railroads came forth with a lot of voluntary measures, you know, working closely with communities. You know, it's a lot, a lot of um, general stuff. The one thing that the OEA did recommend um, specifically to our region, bless you, and um, um, specifically to our region, I do want to comment is the establishment of quiet zones where they don't exist today, but we're practical. So the comment is, if they're not existing today, it's already been determined that's very difficult to implement. So we're concerned about the word practical. Um, predictive mobility system, this is going to give an indication to emergency responders kind of feedback back to their back to their uh you know to their to the firehouse or police station that hey a train is approaching the likelihood of crossing x to be blocked is is high so they'll they're looking they're willing to work with that advanced warning to motorists that as you're approaching this crossing a train approaching think about rerouting and then finally they're going to create kind of what i'll call a community liaison for five years that that'll be our conduit to to the cp um and also our conduit to to make sure that the mitigation measures that they identified are in fact being implemented so where we sit today is they, as you know, DuPage County took the lead, Bill Edson, assistant county engineer, on a time delay study that um, uh, I've never seen anybody take uh, as much effort to review it in the level of detail that they did. And so obviously we don't want them to have the last word. So we will go through, and we are going through their uh, comment uh, uh, to our response, our uh, uh, time delay study. And we'll provide that to, the, um, to our um, um, coalition members to bring forward. It's so finally, I guess, you know, whether we could comment directly to the STB is still to be determined, but we are going to advocate for, I think, the accuracy um, of our and the detail for our time delay study. In addition, there's other comments we'll probably bring forth. Um, so the coalition continues to meet now on a weekly basis. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens with the final decision of the STB. We did recommend four, I think, three or four grade separations. Uh, particularly through, I think, Itasca, Wooddale, and Bensonville, those were determined to be unnecessary because of, again, of the minimal impact that these eight additional trains, 10,000 feet long, will have on circulation and traffic um, impacts in the area and safety and emergency response. So, um, so we'll wait to see that on the, on, you know, on the parallel track as we are moving forward, working with the coalition to, to provide a response to the OEAs, uh, final EIS, and specifically their, their response to our um, traffic delay study. So, uh, Thank you, Chris. Um, I just wanted, I was at a meeting in a very large public meeting in September, I believe, um, well over 300 people were there. And um, I personally spoke because 25 years ago, I lived through the merger of the Union Pacific and the Chicago and Northwestern. And the impact is probably greater than what they're predicting. So that was what I spoke to as a homeowner. Um, but Chris did a fantastic job describing all of the um, possible impacts and the first responders who were there, police and fire from many communities. Um, they just, it was a great presentation. Um, Marty Oberman is the head of the Surface Transportation Board and uh, former, he used to be my alderman many years ago in the city of Chicago, but Marty knows, knows the area. So if, if anything, at least we have an advocate who, or we have a representative who understands the impact on this area. So um, I especially want to thank Chris for his presentation both that night and also uh, going to Washington. We've done everything that we can do, uh, unfortunately, for impact. These railroad, railroad mergers generally go through, but if anything we can do to have contact with the railroad, especially um, and any kind of mitigation efforts is really appreciated. So thank you very much, Chris, for your hard work on this. And We'll keep carrying on until they make a final decision. So thank you. Anyone else have any comments or any questions to add to this issue? Um, member uh, Chaplin has her arm up. Okay, thank Member Chaplin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
Chris, you mentioned quiet zones. So could you just explain, is that um, somewhere where they don't blow the horn or what is the quiet zone? Exactly. Okay, so, so, okay, so they're not gonna blow the horn during certain, through certain intersections or at certain times of night or how does that work? So um, I'm going to yield to Bill. What I will say the thing about quiet zones is it's very, very unique to this part of the country. Yes, I, don't I know. Think any place very, else has quiet very, zones. Just because I was right. on, you know, yeah. on, I was on the Railroad Safety Council. Yes. yes. And yeah. quiet zones kind of make me a little nervous. Yeah. So, so with normal train operations, every train that approaches every crossing has to sound its horn. Okay. So where you have multiple crossings in a tight space, like you do throughout suburban Chicago, mm -hmm. um, the trains are constantly blowing their horns. Right. And so the um, going back years and years now, the FRA established a process, the um, Illinois also established a process itself, where a community could work with the railroad, make specific safety improvements that would hopefully prevent some of the concerns that come along on the safety side in exchange for the trains not blowing their horns just because they're approaching a crossing. Um, in any situation where an engineer sees uh, a hazard of any kind, somebody, a car, a pedestrian near the tracks, anything, another train, whatever, they still sound their horn. So it's not a prohibition on blowing the horn. It's just eliminating this requirement that they blow their horn as they approach every single great crossing. Okay. Okay. It's a and, and Bill, if I can interject for a moment, um, isn't, I think almost I, all of Northeastern Illinois is in a quiet zone. I think that was the decision that was made well, 20, odd, 20 odd years ago. We're all, there's all, there's crossings at, uh, there's gates at every crossing, et cetera. So uh, Chicagoland is eligible. Yeah, Chicago is eligible for quiet zones, but each, each individual section of railroad track has to be separately established. There's no blanket. Okay. That applies. And so, for example, Roselle is one of the communities that's had a real hard time um, through this process. We heard multiple times they've had a real hard time establishing a quiet zone near downtown. And those residents who live in condos and apartments right near the tracks um, have you know, constantly complained about the, the train noise and the horns. And Roselle was able to establish an overnight quiet zone, mm -hmm. but they cannot, they have not been able to get a full time. 24 seven quiet zone. Um, and is that basically railroad crossing issues or? There are three crossings in downtown Roselle within what? Like block, block of, two blocks of each other? I was on the village board when we got to deal with that in Roselle. And yeah. or, or so all it's the proximity of the crossings because? Yeah, there's three crossings within half a mile of each other. Okay, okay. so thank you, I appreciate that. So, and then, um, you talked about the three or four grade separations. You know, you said they weren't, um, they didn't need them because they said there's not going to be that much more. But is there any way, um, you know, federal funds came available um, that, you know, maybe the county could work with the state and the federal government to, um, you know, eventually put these um, grade separations in? I mean, or is it a definite no? I mean, in the future, could right. so so I think that's a question to bring back to the coalition okay. communities. Yeah. Um, one of them was York Road, which is Bensonville. The other two were Prospect and Wooddale, okay. Wood, Wooddale Irving Park, and those are county. So the next question is, let's see if the STB is going to recommend anything, and okay. with that. Um, like they did with the CN merger of the EJ and E, they actually assessed the railroad with about two thirds of the cost. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't happen, if the coalition communities come together and say, we still believe that in spite of the final EIS, the great separations are warranted, then I do think we have a path toward uh, federal funding. Okay. And then also, because I mean, there is going to be, and this will be my last common question. So um, if there's going to be uh, increased train traffic and we're not blowing the horns, um, maybe to another option is put four quad gates in because that's another um, extra barrier just in case, um, you know, it just adds a little more safety, especially with more of these trains coming through. So just another option maybe. I think that's one of the quiet zone improvement um, yeah. options. And I think it's something that the railroad identified as well as a potential uh, voluntary right. measure, but we, some of it's gonna be what the STB dictates. Okay. Um, okay. And what we found in, in working with the railroad is um, the railroad in a lot of the, you know, pretty much everything, the railroad gets to do what they want and we have to try to right. work with them. Yes. And so we don't necessarily get to decide 
um, even on our roads, whether a four quad gate goes in because that's all tied into the railroad. Okay. So we have to get cooperation okay. to do it. Yeah. Just the, the push for. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, Member Colbert has her hand up. I'm sorry, Member Colbert. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't know exactly how the structure, um, the surrounding area looks like where this railroad um, is, but is there a possibility if a, maybe a bridge could be built over it for relieving traffic congestion or? Well, I think that's the great separation we're oh, talking about. Yeah. So yeah. Take okay. the, the county highway or, oh, or, right. or, <laughs> or over, but the issue is funding. Chris, it would be fair to say 50 million for a over that's not unreasonable 50 million yeah. 80, 80, 80. 50 to 80 has yeah. been thrown out 50 there. 80 per per uh, grade separation so uh lots to continue talking about but chris again i want to thank you for everything you've done with this and uh we'll keep our fingers crossed that they protect our residents because uh having lived through it it's um it can be far more impactful than than what they're predicting so uh okay editorializing aside any new business uh, old business. I'm sorry, any old, this was old business, but any other old business? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I was just wondering about 9A. I wanted to go back to 9A, and I noticed that, um, I wondered if this was um, a low bid or why we're using a company out of Will County for the Peterbilt. And when we were rolling through the agenda, I didn't get to ask that question. Um, I believe, I'm sorry, Chris, would you like to respond to that? Hill County. I'm sorry. H County. 9A, uh, Peter built. Yeah, if it's, uh, again, um, it's, it, uh, since it's low bid, I, I'm assuming. No, I'm asking if it's low bid because it doesn't say that here. Yeah, it, um, it, they're in the. Per uh, low bid. Per okay. low bid is okay. 9A. All right. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, I'd love to see our money spent in DuPage County. I really would. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Okay, sure. thank you. One of the big issues right now is availability. So when we can get our hands on things, it's not getting any better at the moment. So um, also, any other old business? Uh, Chair Ozog, yes, Chair Ozog, I have yes. an idea. that's okay. <laughs> so uh, we did, and some of you might remember, uh, what was announced this week that Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, planning was successful in receiving a $5 million grant for a safety action plan for the region. Um, it was kind of unprecedented in that that application included the entirety of the Northeast Illinois, all, seven, uh, all six counties and the state of Illinois agreeing to share in the match for that. Um, so our share, we brought agreement through county board back in November, was roughly 60000 out of $5 million grant, so that's pretty good. It'll help establish a DuPage County action plan. It'll dovetail nicely into the local road safety plan that John Loper um, and Sid have been heading up. So what this action plan allows us to do is, once it's complete, is to be able to compete for implementation dollars for the same grant program. The grant program is $1 billion a year for the life of the uh, Infrastructure Investment Act. And so once we get through the action plan, which is a prerequisite, um, kind of like Kelp 1 before you take Kelp 2. Um, all right. Engineering joke. <laughs> engineering joke. <laughs> never, note to self, never do an engineering joke. This thing, right over our heads. <laughs> okay, and then. Um, so well, we all know what Calc is, so carry on. <laughs> <laughs> we know we'll never use it in our real life. That's what I know. <laughs> And then, um, so that allows once it's complete to compete for the implementation uh, dollars, which is really where, where the money hits the road, so to speak. So um, congratulations to CMAP. We look forward to the partnership um, and, and John and Sid's uh, effort in, in helping uh, our partner in that application. So that's it for, for, deal, for me. Okay. Uh, any other old business? Okay, hearing none. Any news, new business? We'll do a journey. Okay, I'm Everybody sorry. Austin business you'd like to discuss. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Move to adjourn four times. Uh, okay, I'm now going to move to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye.